I am going to talk today about inflation. And uh, I know that I'm going to be picking up on things that you've already heard. It, this is the third day of the conference. If you, it, it's, it's, on, it's been recorded. If you miss things, you should go back. If you missed David Garofalo the other day discussing things, go back and listen to his talk. Terrific talk. Yesterday, Pierre Lassonde, uh, who a wonderful, wonderful guy, uh, gave a terrific talk. Uh, he, too, mentioned inflation. Yesterday afternoon, Jamie Horvat as well. Uh, I'm talking about the sort of the wrapper uppers. And then in between it all, you got some terrific uh, conference presentations by a lot of companies. I mean, I myself, I follow this stuff for a living. I was, I've been really informed by, 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 the, by these presentations, terrific people, terrific companies. I know a lot of the geology in places and whatever. And just so you know a little bit, I, I, I'm a geologist. I'm a real geologist. I have a, I have a Brunton compass that makes me a geologist. I have a rock hammer which really makes me a geologist. Uh, stealing little thunder from Mark. I, I go out in the desert sometime with my hat, you know, and I, you know, in the blazing sun and I look for stuff. And I sometimes I even find it. I mean, I can tell you the difference between cassiterite from Bolivia, copper from Peru, um, you know, I, I, you know, beautiful lazurite, malachite. This is from Laos. You don't, don't find this stuff anymore. Um, Anyhow, I, I get out in the field and I love it. That was all pre-COVID. I'm looking forward to doing it again. But today, we're this morning, we're going to talk about inflation. Yesterday, uh, Pierre Lasson uh, gave a nice, a nice kind of introduction to where things are, and a lot of that is going to make my work easy today because he said, you know, that, that back in the '70s we started to have inflation. People said, "Oh, don't worry. Oh, don't worry. It's going to go away. It's it's just a little thing. It's not no big deal." And it's you know. Oh, yeah, really? You know, inflation was sleeping, then inflation woke up, and then inflation really started to come and gallop. And, and in my view, the wolf is finally here. The inflation is here. Uh, we are in the early, early innings of all this. Uh, just sort of uh, apocryphal, perhaps, that uh, January this year was the full wolf, full wolf moon, according to the Farmer's Almanac, a very uh, ominous uh, uh, point for what you know what we have in store for us. You probably see it. I mean, if you go to the grocery store, you see at the grocery store, you know, the price of meat, the price of really everything in every aisle has been going up. And if the price isn't going up, well, the, you know, the volumes are shrinking. You're getting that shrinkflation. Uh, other places where you see inflation, uh, you housing prices. This is a national, you know, uh, number here, but this is from Zillow. I mean, you know, it's been it's been going up, but it's been really going up in the last year or so, and housing is inflating. New houses are going up, in particular because of the lumber and everything else. Old houses, they're, they're going up too. Rental houses are going up. Did you know 20% of, of home sales in America are to big corporate entities right now? We're sort of financializing home ownership in this country. We're, gonna, we're really feudalizing the place. Uh, in terms of monetary policy, we're you know, a nation of people with a lot of money, a nation of renters who can never afford to buy a house. Um, lumber, we mentioned that already. If, if I, 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 this is 25 year chart. Look at that. Holy smokes. I mean, uh, I, a couple, about a week or two ago, I was at Home Depot. I, just out of curiosity, how much is a how much is a plank of plywood? You know, four foot by eight foot. It was over fifty dollars for a piece of plywood. So you've got to be kidding me! No, this is reality. This is what's going on. Um, inflation is is right there in front of you. Price of copper, a little bit a little bit closer to home. Here's here's my little piece of copper here. I got got lots more where this came from, but this is from Michigan. Actually, pulled it out of the ground. You know. Um, uh, copper has been soaring, which is good if you're in the copper mining business. That's great uh, uh, for for all of us copper investors out there. Uh, it's been a, it's been a it's been a nice 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 run here. Uh, I and I think that it, in terms of where the run is going, I think we're going to stick around uh, for a while. Uh, used cars, just throw those in there. That, um, past three years, look at that; those numbers have gone up. You know, but because there's problems with new cars because of the chips and all that. You know. Inflation, inflation, inflation. That's the, that's the underlying theme, you know, just it's going to cost you more to live. Uh, price of gasoline. I mean, the last 18 months, I mean, obviously the price of gas was very low last year because nobody was driving. We we're all sitting in our house, you know, kind of, you know, with the windows closed, tape shut, you know, wearing masks and all that kind of thing. Uh, now everybody's out and about. But, you know, I mean, uh, where I live, the price of gasoline's up 30 cents a gallon in the last month. It's up over a dollar a gallon in about the last four months. Uh, this, this is the national version from uh, you know, one of those gasoline websites. 
uh, crude oil, you know, it was 40 bucks a, a, a barrel. It's over, it's over 70 now. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, the United States doesn't control the price. Uh, Saudi doesn't control the price. Russia controls the price. That's a long story. But um, I assure you that uh, during in the last year when we were all locked up wearing our face masks, uh, the, uh, Vladimir Putin and his group got together and did a little geo strategy and got together with the Saudis. They're running the price of oil. It's over 70 bucks a barrel now. Uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, just the other day, oil traders are betting on a hundred dollar barrel. Those uh, those are the oil futures. There, just a little little chart uh, chart to throw it at you. Um, price of coal. This is interesting. Everybody hates coal. Oh, coal! You know, fuel of the past, all that sort of thing. This is the last five years. I mean, it was doing okay until about three years ago. Then it had a two year downswing, and then I mean, then Joe Biden, you know, got elected, and he hates coal. He hates fossil fuels. His whole administration is all about is all about uh, is all about uh, uh, hating coal. And uh, look at that! Look at the price of coal. Huh? Not, not bad, huh? Not bad at all. Um, iron ore. There you go. Uh, uh, I'll mention one of the presenters, Champion Champion Iron, the other day. Wow, what a great uh, uh, what, a, what a great run they've had. Really, really an interesting company. If I can mention one of the presenters here, give a shout out. Um, price of steel has gone up. I mean, this is this is just rebar. I mean, there's all sorts of different alloys of steel, um, and uh, but everything's everything's going up. Everybody I know who's in the steel business is is going up. Uh, the American Petroleum Institute just it was either yesterday or the day before uh, forecast a 50% cost rise in the cost of drill pipe this year. Um, the uh, uh, you know I, we're talking mining here, not oil, but you know a lot of a lot of mining involves drilling, and drilling involves pipe. Uh, you know uh, these are these are important factors that go into everything. Uh, uh, steel is up, not not probably not going down. Uh, cost of cement. Let's look at cement. It's been going up for five years, um, and uh, uh, you know it's, it's it's pricey. What does it take to make cement? Well, it takes limestone and it takes energy. You know, so the price of energy goes up. Um, there's your there's the cost of cement. Uh, manufacturing has been going up in the Western world. I mean, uh, you know, despite everything that you hear about you know unemployment and this and that, uh, try to find skilled labor. Uh, try to find skilled labor in this market, you know, so manufacturing costs are going up. Now, I throw all this out here, all these numbers and everything else. Uh, one final item, this is important for the mining sector, the price of explosives. They're up, they're, it's up somewhat, but it's it's relatively under control in the last, uh, you know, 10 years. Uh, but the price of explosives is up as well. So now, now what does that mean for, for us who follow the mining sector? Well, the major major comp cost components of mining. Let's take a look. I mean, you got to have labor to do your mining. Okay, and price of labor is going up. Fuel price of fuel is going up. Big component of mining: steel, cement, copper for wire and machinery. Prices are going up. Lumber is going up. Explosives are uh, uh, somewhat okay, but still, for everybody who's in the mining business, uh, you know, in terms of forecasting your um, uh, your, your your cost structure, I mean. Uh, how do you do that in an inflationary environment? It's 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 a tough job. I mean, yeah, the price of the price of what you sell is going up, yes, but the uh, cost of how you produce it that's going up too. So uh, I, I I think and you know I suppose we can all hope that the uh, uh, that the prices that the that we get at the uh, end of the day will maintain uh, and, and and go up. And we're in an inflationary time though, but. Uh, uh, for all these price costs that we see or price rises that we see um it is a uh, it, it 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 creates a problematic uh set, uh problematic forecast for the future so let's uh look at a few other things meanwhile we've got political confusion everywhere if not industrial what i call cognitive dissonance um one of the key elements of everything is energy i mean People say, well, you know, energy is like, you know, six, eight, ten percent of the world's economy. Yeah, great. Try running the other 90 percent without it. I mean, through a few slides here, you know, there, there's some the, the Keystone XL pipes sitting in the snow there, not, you know, not under the ground carrying uh, carrying uh, bitumen from uh, Canada. Um, in fact, this today, this morning, I just opened the Wall Street Journal and the Keystone XL is uh, is dead. The company that runs it, you know, TC Trans Canada company is killing it. Um, 
that, that's symbolic of, uh, you know, that sort of Western war against its own energy sources. Down in the lower left there, that's Texas in February um, when, you know, the big freeze came. And a great big state like Texas, which brags about, you know, how its GDP is bigger than, you know, entire countries and all this sort of stuff, you know, and oh, move to Texas and everything else. Yeah, great, you know, move to Texas. And I'm not, I'm not knocking Texas other than they were totally unprepared for the, uh, uh, for this uh, weather event. Oh my goodness, it's cold in the wintertime. Who would have thought, you know? And somehow or another in the future, we're, we, the US, Canada, Western world, we're supposed to run our whole economy on windmills and solar power. Good luck with that. Uh, long, long discussion there. Um, throw a little shout out for this Green New Fraud uh, book here. Um, there is so much wrong with um, with the whole forecast that will somehow run the world on you know solar and wind. It's not even funny. Uh, but at the same time, all those windmills are going to use a lot of copper. They're going to use a lot of rare earths. I mean, polycrystalline silicon, things like that. Um, again, it, it's a, it's it's mecca for the mining industry uh, to make these things happen. Uh, government policy is spend, 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 but at the same time, you know, frankly, I, I don't know how you get out of this. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, we're, we're coming up on the 50th anniversary of Nixon closing the gold window. Um, and uh, we're coming up on the 50th anniversary of, you know, everything sort of monetary going like this, you know, uh, in the world. Uh, last year at, when, you know, Trump was still president and Nancy Pelosi, you know, tore up his State of the Union speech, that was apocryphal. I mean, that was, that was searching. I mean, and, and it's not even a personal thing, about, you know, Trump, Biden, Pelosi, whatever. This is a cultural thing, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it's a cultural thing. And, and I'm not sure I'm not sure where things go. I mean, where, where, where do you go when you're in like, you know, fourth century Rome and you look around and, you know, and you're and you're seeing things the way they are depressing. But, you know, what the heck? We, well, while it's all happening, we may as well have some fun, go out in the world and see things. Um, it's going to be spend, spend, spend. I mean, we're, we're not talking billions and tens of billions and hundreds of billions. We're talking trillions, trillions of dollars. Um, where does this money come from? Well, it comes from nowhere. It comes from little ones and zeros at the Federal Reserve. And that gets us to the next, you know, you know, 10 or so minutes, uh, you know, while I, you know, kind of make, make the points that I really want to make. Inflation's here. The wolf is at the door. Hello, hello. Um, people are worried. Can you blame them? What, what, what do people do when they're worried? Well, you know, here they're, you know, carrying pitchforks and and torches and all that. This is from uh, the, the, the original Frankenstein movie. Uh, just, just sort of throw that out there. Another thing that they do when they're worried is they, you know, people, people vote with their dollars. That they, they vote with their inflating, declining dollars, and they go, uh, they go into hard assets. Um, so we're going to look at the other end of the mining side today. We, you know, the shiny stuff. Uh, you know, both old metal and new. Um, uh, on the left is a 1921. Morgan silver dollar, uh, and on the right is uh, is a is a is a U.S. mint box that you can buy from it. And I don't I'm just giving and mentioning the name Atmex American Precious Metal Exchange. There are many other uh, coin device or coin sellers. There are many other uh, you know places to buy. I just I just sort of mentioned them because that's where I got. It. But I mean you you can go out and you can buy a you know buy a little you know sheaf of U.S. mint uh, you know twenty dollar uh, or, or one dollar you know. Uh, eagles, although that one dollar going to cost you something. Uh, this is this is one of those 1921 Morgans. Um, it, this is this is really a 100 year old coin, and I mention that for for a reason. It's because a couple of weeks ago, just a couple of weeks ago, the U.S. Mint, the U.S. Mint, which knows a few things about coins and uh, about metals and precious metals, things like that, they had a sale. They're they're coming out with a 100 year anniversary of the 1921 U.S. Morgan, 100-year anniversary. They're going to sell, they're going to sell you a 2021 uh, coin uh, for $85 for 0.89 of an ounce of 999 silver, $85 for that. Now, this is, of course, this is a numismatic product, okay? I mean, it is a high-end collector item sort of a thing. Um, this one was going to have the CC, the Carson City Mint, you know, stamp on it. Um, they sold 175,000 of these things in, in 20 minutes. They crashed the website. Think about that. You know, that, that's how much demand is out there for these, for these, for these new coins. But that's not all. There's more. 
because there was another mint special product, 2021 uh, Morgan uh, anniversary, 100th anniversary with the O, oh, the New Orleans, you know, stamp on it. And they're selling that for 85 bucks. And they sold 175,000 of those within 20 minutes. So what does that tell you? That tells you that there's immense demand out there. I mean, the idea that that, that not just for your, your basic sort of junk silver, not just, you know, bags of old quarters or bags of old dimes, and, but, but, but for even special things where, where we're literally at $85, that's, you know, that, that's, you know, three and a half times the markup on, um, uh, of, uh, of, of spot silver. Think about that, you know, but, but the, the U S mint sold it out and they were very embarrassed. Uh, they, they sent out an apology, email to everybody, which I, I received a copy of it. And they go, oh, we're really sorry, man, but you know, you know, there's a world shortage of silver, is what they said. Well, that created a whole nother, you know, situation. Um, and they had to send out a corrective email, which they did. The United States Mint, there it is, on Wednesday, June 2nd, 1151, according to my timestamp, the U.S. Mint is being impacted by what they call silver blank shortages among its suppliers. The demand for many of our bullion and numismatic products is at record heights, okay, and increasingly outpacing the supply of silver blanks available through suppliers. They wanted to clarify that there's no shortage of silver in the world, but we just can't get enough silver blanks to, 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 stamp, our, to stamp our products. Now, think about that for a minute. The U.S. Mint is one of the largest, you know, big, you know, mints in the world. I mean, there's the U.S. Mint, Canada Mint, Perth Mint. Uh, Austria, uh, South Africa, and then there are other countries that have their own, you know, mints, and they can, you know, um, I mean, you can you can buy a you can buy you know you can buy a silver coin from you know from from a Shanghai mint, you know, here's a Shanghai dragon here. I'm going to show it to you if you're interested. It's got a little square thing in it because you can. You know, one of the ways they used to store these joint coins in China was to put them on a stick. Um, I mean, you you can buy uh, you can you can buy uh, coins from where the heck is it? You know, I was going to say you can buy them from Ukraine, you can buy them from Russia, you can buy them all over the place. Uh, but the U.S. Mint's one of the big mints of the world. The U.S. Mint has clauses in its contract that says, silver supplier, if you have problems supplying silver, you supply us first. We are the number one supplier. You don't give it to everybody else. You give it to us first or else you're not our supplier anymore. That's written right there in the four letters of their contracts. Think about that for a moment. The U.S. Mint is basically telling the whole world that we have silver blank shortages among our suppliers. Well, we are the number we the Mint, you know, are the number one customer for these suppliers, and they're not they can't they can't meet our demand. So so when they when people say, oh, don't worry, there's no shortage of silver. Well, you know, I don't know about that. You know, uh, I don't know about that. Um, I mean, they'll they'll scramble, they'll find, they'll get, they'll 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 obtain it, but we will see. We will see how it goes, but what it is, it's a reflection of people, you know, leaving the uh, leaving the currency system, the cash the cash system, and moving into hard metals with that proverbial five percent or ten percent or fifteen percent of their uh, of their uh, of, of their uh, you know portfolio. You know, um, this this is what we're seeing, and like I said, we are in the early innings of all of this. Uh, now it's much the same with gold as well. Uh, the mint, when it comes to buying gold coins, I mean, these are sort of the special, you know, uh, um, the special stamps of the of the of coins. But I mean, there's a couple. There, these are one ounce, you know, U.S. Uh, eagles, and there's a buffalo in there. It's got an Indian head, but there's a buffalo on the other side, so people call them buffaloes. But I mean, first of all, look at look at the price. They're I mean, gold is at um, uh, you know. It, it, Eight, whatever, 1800 some dollars uh, yesterday or whatever. Look at the markup on those things. These are now, these are for the special, the num numismatic versions, but that does that's okay. You can't buy them anyhow. They're sold out, you know, um, sold out, sold out, sold out. If you go to the US Mint and you go looking through for what can I buy? What's available? What's it? Sold out, sold out, sold out, not available, not available. Not available. Something's going on. You know, this, this is this is not this is not a uh, this is not a a robust market. This is a market where the early people get in there and they clean it all out with everything they can, paying premium prices for numismatics as opposed to you know any, anything else they can get. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to go with the mint. You can buy from dealers, you know, you know, uh, but you're going to pay over the spot. Again, we'll go back to Apmex, but not 
you know, I, I mean, on a personal level, I've used AppMex in the past, but there are many, many, many fine other uh, coin outfits out there. That, that, but look, look at this. Here's this is yesterday. This is a this is a U.S. Uh, this is a U.S. Buffalo, um, two thousand and fifty-five dollars. If you buy a hundred of them, I mean, I don't know if you can see the fine print on there, but if you really, if you are really uh, interested. Uh, you're you're paying well over twenty one hundred dollars. You're paying two hundred fifty dollars over spot, basically uh, about about twelve percent, thirteen percent markup on that. Um, and and people are buying them. I mean, they uh, you know you go, go buy them, and you still might have to wait uh, wait for availability. Um, how about on silver? What about silver again? At max? If how about just your basic U.S. you know U.S. silver eagle? There you go. Good old you know good old silver eagle. Everybody everybody likes a U.S. silver eagle. What price of uh, spot price of silver? Pick a number. It's, you know, 27, 28, thereabouts. You know, well, well, you're looking in the range of, you know, 41, 42 dollars, you know, to, to buy it uh, online. There's, that's, you know, pick, pick a number. It's 45, 50% markup over spot just to, um, just, just to get it. So again, uh, people are buying and they are paying very high premiums, you know, in a, in a historical sense. Uh, for you know, for the privilege of uh, converting their cash dollars into hard metal, uh, it tells you something that inflation is here, and um, and that is that's the focus that you should have as you go about your mine investment, your mining investment. Uh, take away from all of this, uh, there's there is demand out there for every ounce, every ounce of gold, every ounce of silver that somebody can uh, you know pull out of the river, you know pull out of the side of the hill, pull out of the pit. Um, we are looking at, uh, at an era of inflation, which is another way of saying we're looking at an era of the decline of the uh, purchasing power of cash, of cash dollars. Um, you know, things go up, things go down day to day, but over time, um, gold will hold its own. Uh, I, I'll end, I started out mentioning uh, uh, Russia controlling the price of oil. Um, so one or two comments there that people think that that's not true. I think that you're wrong. Um, you and I, and Mr. Putin, can have that discussion. I on the top left is uh, a gold ruble, a 50 ruble piece from the days of Tsarist Russia. Uh, it's about about a quarter of an ounce, a little seven seven point something grams, um, and uh, that that was a very standard unit of currency back in the days of Russia. I happen to have one right here, and. Uh, over time, you know, Russia became had their Bolshevik revolution. They became communist. But what did what were they? What what other coins did they mint under under communism? Guess what? There's a 19. This is a 1975 Chernovets. It's a, another. This this too was nominally ten dollars worth of uh, you know, face value rubles or ten rubles. I'm sorry. Uh, but again, a quarter ounce of gold. It's about the exact same size. The exact same everything. And even today. The Russians are printing or minting gold coins. Uh, the new uh, uh, St. George slaying the dragon uh, coin that comes out, that's a 50 ruble coin. But again, you know, there, there it is right there. A um, hundred years, a hundred and some years of Russia, you know, from the czars to the communists to the Russian Federation today, they have maintained a certain type of coin that they produce, not so much for circulation, but uh, but as, as just to, to sort of maintain a standard of, uh, you know, what it mean, what, it, what a Russian coin ought to be, what a Russian coin, a, a czarist Russian coin, a Soviet Russian coin, a modern Russian coin, it's going to have a quarter ounce of gold in it. That, that, that tells me that there's a historical memory there. Uh, they're making a statement to the world. And while we're at it, and for all of you who dismiss Russia as just, you know, a nuclear armed, you know, uh, gas station, to which I say, yeah, well, the United States is just a nuclear armed big box store. You know, look what happens when a ship gets stuck in the Suez Canal. You know, our economy crashes. Um, look what Russia has been doing for the last, you know, seven or eight years, really, since uh, since a lot of bad things started happening in Ukraine in the uh, early mid teens. But they, they've did, they've done nothing but accumulate gold. Russia has one of the highest uh, ratios of gold to GDP. Uh, you know, well, has the highest ratio of gold to GDP in the world. Uh, and uh, I, I've worked many years with a guy named Jim Rickards who. You know, writes a lot about this, and we've we've written a lot about it, and there's much to say about it. But uh, Russia has accumulated a lot of gold over the years, and um, 
Uh, they have probably the most gold-backed currency in the world, despite all the sanctions. Uh, and they don't need the West, and they're teaming up with China. And that's a whole other story. But for, for those of us on the outside looking in, as we see inflation, 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 the decline of uh, the purchasing power of our dollars, uh, and just craziness at the political level, um, gold is the way to go, gold, silver. Uh, and uh, on the, you know, the extension of that is uh, the, the, mining, the mining side of the house. You know, well-run gold miners like Pierre Lassonde yesterday said, you know, management team and ore grade. You know, I mean, I, lo I love the geology. I love the jurisdiction and I love the management teams. You know, Pierre and I are on the same boat with that. Um, and so with that, we are coming to the end of my discussion with you. <clears throat> and uh, we are coming to the beginning of another wonderful day of uh, terrific presentations. I see that Mark is back here with his hat. Mark. You know, you, you, you wore your hat the other day. I'm, I'm a geo guy, so I'll put on my hard hat here. <laughs> we'll get down into the mine together. Uh, uh, and we, will, we will crank on those rocks and bust those rocks, and I, we, will, uh, we, will, we will pull some gold out of the ground here. So I love thank it, Thank you, Barbara. everyone, for listening. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, uh, attendees. And, Mark, I kick it off to you.